Welcome back to Squash Tech, where we make lists. Because something I have discovered recently is that people love lists. Tier lists, top 10 lists, doesn't matter. As long as it's a list with things that are being listed, people seem to like it. So I'm going to go through and give my top 10 upcoming cards to this game. Uh, a fun fact, there are a lot of data mined cards. And if you go to snap.fan, shout out to them because I used them for the card images in this, <clears throat> this little slideshow. Uh, you can look at all the un unreleased cards. Uh, it's important to disclaim that some of them could easily be changed before they are actually implemented into the game. We've actually seen that already. For instance, Black Panther was a 4 energy 2 power originally. But... Uh, it's still fun to look at these, uh, not only just to get a glimpse of what is coming and, you know, maybe the near or the distant future, we're not sure, but also just to get an idea of, you know, how we analyze Marvel Snap cards, how we think about deck building in this game, how we evaluate power level of cards within the context of the game. So I put a couple of honorable mentions in because I am really bad at like made, making these final decisions like the the, the 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 top eight were pretty easy to come up with but after that i was like shoot these are good so my first honorable mention is ms marvel i just think this is a really powerful effect because of the amount of power that you're just getting for your mana this represents 14 power for three energy assuming that you've played it middle which is just one of the highest ratios of cost to, to power that I can think of in the whole game and really there's not that there's no investment involved at all just you have to keep in mind that the downside of this card is that it could be fairly easily disrupted just a single green goblin or debris or something and you played a 3-4 but 3-4 is a stat line that's not even pathetic on its own so you could still come back from that there are also instances where playing this middle won't be feasible but even that can still be kind of reasonable because you're kind of getting like a claw um not quite as much power as a claw but this is only three mana so it seems like a powerful card to me could see play in something like a spectrum type archetype uh but it did not quite make the top 10 but it was it's cool enough that i wanted to honorable mention it like i said and my second honorable mention is silver samurai here when this is discarded from your hand, draw a card. That's just really strong. <laughs> um, the reason it didn't make the top 10 is because I feel like it might be a little bit weird in just in terms of clunkiness in the current discard ar archetypes that are really trying to benefit from Apocalypse and Swarm. Like say you have Colleen Wing in hand and she discards your lowest cost card and you're trying to get some zero cost swarms. I mean, hitting this instead is still really good, but it, it, it can just kind of get in the way of things. Uh, and card draw in this game is very powerful. Pretty soon we will be talking about that even more. <laughs> A little spoiler alert. And that was my only other honor honorable mention. So now we're on to the actual top 10 where things get real juicy. So number 10 here, I have Shuri. Really cool, like, top-down card design from Second Dinner. As usual, I think they're, they are phenomenal at this. Uh, Shuri will obviously work really well with Black Panther. On reveal, double the power of the next card you play. You play that with Black Panther, he's going to double and then double. It's kind of like playing him with Wong, but it's a little bit less disruptible when you compare it to Wong because you don't have to play Black Panther in the same lane. You can play it in a different area, which makes it harder for your opponent to, like, Cosmo snipe you. But you still can get Cosmo sniped. Um... And beyond that, I like Shuri's potential with cards just in general, like Magneto or something. You get a 24 power. I mean, that's going to win lanes the majority of the time. Uh, this is a card that you got to build your deck around pretty specifically, so she's going to have narrow applications. But I think if this card released in this state, she would be definitely see play. Uh, pretty powerful looking card to me. Absorbing Man. On reveal, if the last card you played has an on reveal, this copies it. Uh, this just looks extremely versatile and flexible to me. Uh, it's hard to imagine 
this not seeing play because especially because right now uh, just Wong decks with all kinds of bond reveals like Black Black Panther, White Tiger, Odin of course, Arnim Zola. <clears throat> There's just a lot of stuff out there that's really strong. Heck, even like Mjolnir. If you play Thor and you draw your Mjolnir, you play Mjolnir and this. That's really powerful. Uh, so I just envision this seeing play in all kinds of on reveal type archetypes which are pretty strong right now and i don't see them going anywhere i mean cosmo is in the game right now and is incredibly strong and yet on reveal is still very playable so this just looks like a clear it will see play if it comes out but not like not a dominant type card which is why it's only number nine here lady death strike is really cool on reveal destroy the enemy card with the highest power at this location but it's a six drop, so you have to dedicate your final turn to doing this. But we all know how it feels to get hit with a Shang-Chi on your dinosaur or something. And something really cool that Lady Deathstrike does is she, she just always goes off, you know, assuming Cosmo isn't there or something. Um, so it's easier to kind of uh, flex this into a deck and... Be confident that it's going to win you a location on the final turn especially if your opponent's location is full uh, you can kind of just guarantee the math and this looks like a very skill testing card to me because you need to be really planning around what your opponent is doing in order to maximize this but it feels like such an impactful effect that i feel confident it would see quite a bit of play if if this was printed as is uh, this is one of my favorites <clears throat> that has been data mined. At the end of the game, split your total power evenly among all locations. So what I see this card doing is it's kind it's it's similar to Arnim Zola. You can kind of compare it to that because what Arnim Zola accomplishes is it lets you spread your power out among different lanes. You know, you you play either Panther or Devil Dino or something, and Arnim Zola it to two different lanes. Uh, this is doing a similar thing, except it's harder to disrupt. They can't just Cosmo or Armor to stop the Arnim Zola from going off. Uh, you could still get shang chi or something, but this this still seems like a playstyle that would be viable. You just stack an enormous lane and play this, and, and you know, maybe you throw Storm or something into your deck. <clears throat> so you make it so that Living Tribunal buffs your power in the storm lane to get a surprise victory in that lane or, and things like that uh, if if you're just playing high power units and then you top your curve off with this uh, and build your deck in a flexible way i could see this sneaking out some wins in pretty epic fashion and i just love the art look at he's literally holding a galaxy imagine just like i have a galaxy here how badass would that be like Anyway, She-Hulk, sad, it, we would have this card by now for sure if um, Nexus events hadn't flopped, <laughs> but uh, this looks like an extremely powerful addition to pretty narrow decks, mostly just like Death Wave. Um, what this card does essentially, if, if you can't quite tell what we're going for here, it's just another way to play Wave on turn 5 so that you can play two cards the next turn so if you play wave turn five you will float two mana she hawk will go down to four since you floated two mana she will then go down to two so you'll be able to play the she hawk alongside your normal waved card which will cost four and your opponent in theory can only play one four cost card because they don't have anything that's getting discounted like this in their hand you could also do crazy stuff like moon girl and then on turn five just spend two mana or something so that on turn six you're playing double 10 power cards um yeah this just looks like a very it, it it's more narrow than some of the other cards on this list like this isn't seeing play in a huge variety of stuff but where it's powerful it looks extremely powerful to me i, I think it'll make death wave in particular like even better than it is right now and it's already you know like a pretty b maybe a tier kind of competitive deck <clears throat> So this looks really good to me. Number five, this is data mined as the 
January season pass card. <clears throat> uh, it looks extremely <laughs> annoying to me. Because what you're going to do with this is you're going to set up so that you can play your tech cards, essentially. You know, Enchantress and Shang-Chi in particular, they're both four cost cards. So if you're making them cost two less, you add just a lot of flexibility on the final turns of the game. You can also play this with just stuff like Rescue and Jessica or, I don't know, Drax or something silly. Obviously, you're just going to pump your deck with a decent number of four cost cards. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward thing, but it's going to require building your deck pretty specifically. But I think the payoffs are going to be very significant with this. And uh, three three energy for two power. We know that there are setup cards that with that stat line that are just fine. So I, I think this will be a very strong card. This is one of my favorites. Uh, I want Ghost Spider so bad. Just the 2-2 on reveal, move the last card you played here. This is going to be so huge for the movement archetype. Because currently, an issue that that archetype has is uh, just inconsistency. And a lot of your cards just move your stuff to the left. Or you telegraph it with Cloak. Or the power just isn't shaken out right with Doctor Strange. So this card just allows you to guarantee, you know play your vulture on three play this and another two on four or something and it's it's gonna work out a lot more often than it currently does and this card gives you so much flexibility because it's not just moving things to the left every time uh you get to really plan out your plays and i think the added consistency is gonna make movement really good just from this card like this is all that that archetype needs to really see a huge boost in this power level so Give me this card, please. Second dinner. Silver Surfer is the December Season Pass Data Mine card. And I am pretty sure this will be the key piece of one of the best decks in the game. Uh, pretty straightforward. You're just going to put a lot of cards that cost three mana into your deck. You might play Wong. Probably you'll play Wong. Uh, you'll probably play Mystique as well because she'll work with Wong and she costs three. And then you'll play Sarah. And you're just going to play some three cost cards. Yet you don't even care if you skip turn one and two. Uh, on turn five, you play Sarah. And then on turn six, you'll play triple three drop. One of those, ideally, will be Brood. Brood is a three mana, two power that creates two more three cost cards. So you're just going to flood the board with as many three cost cards as possible and play Silver Surfer, and you're going to make a ton of power. And I think it'll be very powerful. Uh, it'll maybe create a Cosmo meta, even though we're already in a Cosmo meta. That card is very strong. Uh, but this is just going to be a very strong and consistent deck, I think. I mean, you know, you'll be pretty reliant on drawing Silver Surfer as often as possible, but oh, there's a lot of decks like that, and you can work with that. Looks very good to me. And now we're into the final two, where... I do not think either of these cards will be printed as is. I would be very, very surprised if this card is released with this same stat line and this same effect. On reveal, gain plus three power for each other card you played this turn with Sarah, which is already one of the best cards in the game. This is going to create enormous monkeys, and these big monkeys are going to be oppressive, I'm worried. So it's not hard to imagine this hitting like 15 power. <clears throat> and when you play Sarah, this only costs one. So you're just gonna <laughs> play turn two Angela, turn three Bishop, turn four, who cares? Turn five Sarah, turn six, dump your hand and shit on people. So <clears throat> this looks ex incredibly powerful. If it releases as is, good luck to the meta. I, it, it might have even warranted number one, but I think that my number one gets this spot for a good reason, <clears throat> which is that Black Knight, just a 1-2, when this is destroyed, draw a card. I think this would homogenize the meta to unprecedented degrees because the opportunity cost of running this is so low uh, and the, the benefit is incredible. Really, all you need to do is put in Carnage and Killmonger. Well, guess what? Those are two of the best cards in the game already. Um, card draw is ridiculous in this game. You would just always have death 
for example. But even if you're not playing a destroy deck, I feel like you'd play the three card package of, or maybe even, you know, this hood, carnage, killmonger. I just feel like you'd throw that in everything. And with the card draw, you're not even really losing out on anything by running running this package. So I just do not see this card being printed like this. I don't know what else they would do. There are some data mine cards that have changed significantly by the time that they came out. <clears throat> and this might be one of those. Or it might just get rebalanced to like a 2-2 two -two or something. And that would be a lot more reasonable, I think. But at its current cost, this thing looks crazy. It's not the kind of card that's going to blow people out. It's just the kind of card that you'll just put in your deck because it's too good. So that's my top 10 upcoming data mine Marvel Snap cards. I hope you liked the list where we listed the things in a list. Uh, just like and subscribe, I guess. Thanks for watching.